What is going on team? Welcome back to another video and it's gonna sound like a slightly more somber vibe today, but it's not, do not fear. If you are new here, my name is Jim Galvin and on this channel we cover all things training, biohacking and ancestral living to help you guys work out what you need to do based on your own individual biology to help improve and optimize your performance, your health and your physique. And today it might sound like it's gonna be a little bit more serious and perhaps it will be, but I wanna cover what I believe are some of the fitness industry's most uncomfortable truths. In a world of instant gratification and doing everything we can to pursue making things easier, which as a general endeavor can have its place, there are a few undeniable facts that sometimes are under communicated by people working in the fitness industry. Probably for two reasons. Firstly, they are not glamorous and they are very hard to sell. Sometimes cold hard truths about championing your own personal responsibility don't sell very well because they ain't sexy. And the second reason is that they might offend some people, the silver bullet chasers, the men and women out there that are looking for that golden nugget or really specific hack that means they don't have to put in the hard work that we know is necessary. And sooner or later, the veil drops on most of these. And when you've been in the game long enough, most of us hopefully gain adequate wisdom to then ironically be circled right back to the beginning again where we realize that success comes from mastering the basics and it always has. And eating exactly 177 grams of a Cameroonian grapefruit at exactly midday, the day before a full moon, is not gonna help your biceps grow. So without further ado, there are five key uncomfortable truths that I wanna share with you today that basically go against the grain of the way that a lot of the fitness industry operates in this day and age. The first one, aptitude and abs are not always positively correlated. That is to say, and I did this as well, that following 18 or 21 year olds that look absolutely jacked and absolutely shredded on their Instagram pages and on their YouTube channels might not necessarily be the only go-to source of wisdom and information for what we wanna be doing. Some of these 19 and a half year old beefcakes might be pretty fucking switched on, but some of them might not be. And I'm not saying that age is always an indicator as to intelligence in this, but I'm saying that there will be 65 year old coaches out there that don't look like 21 year olds because they're not, they're 65, but they have been training various athletes in various different sports for decades and might actually have a lot more flipping information than some of the devilishly handsome young bucks that we're following on Insta. If you're fairly new to training, and for me that is less than two to three years, then realistically the good news for you is pretty much anything you do is gonna work because your training age is so low, you're gonna get a positive adaptation from looking at a flipping barbell. But if you've been in the game a little bit longer and you're trying to refine and tweak some already established foundations or work out how your body works individually and attempt to optimize in that direction, then maybe some of these haggard, weathered, flipping, retired, cold war coaches might actually have some intellectual value to offer. It's not an absolute state. Not all young guys are stupid and all old guys are clever. There are some jack stackers bodybuilders that are 20 that are really flipping switched on and clever. And there are some old blokes that spout a lot of crap and don't actually know anything. And I'm not even suggesting that you stop following the young guys that motivate you. I'm just suggesting that for a little bit more intellectual value, if you're looking for that next level of knowledge to get you bigger and stronger, <coughs> to help your performance transcend to the next level. Maybe some of these geriatrics that look like a melted welly boot might actually be able to help you get bigger and stronger if they've been coaching successfully for the last 900 years. If someone was in the year above Yoda at school when he first started learning about SNC, maybe he's picked up a few things over the last few millennia and we should listen to him. <clears throat> Number two, silver bullets are crumbs, not bricks. I referenced silver bullet chasers earlier, looking for the ultimate hack, which I know is ironic considering if you follow my content for a while, you know that I'm obsessed with bone broth, ice baths, saunas, and red light therapy. But there are two things I'll say. Number one, I am aware that they're tiny little fractions of my performance and they're just kind of designed to bolt me together effectively and just add a layer of paint to the foundations that I've built. And number two is I enjoy the intellectual pursuit of learning about these things and seeing how they affect both my physique, my energy, my cognition, my sleep, everything like that. So I enjoy, I enjoy trying these new things and attempting to understand how they're gonna work. And I'm also aware that they're not really gonna be a game changer. So here's the crux of it, here's the uncomfortable truth. Nothing you see, hear or read is gonna change your results in the gym in regards to both performance or physique, more than increasing your own application of effort towards your current program. I don't believe that if you're watching this, you're currently a pussy, mainly because this channel doesn't necessarily seem to attract that kind of audience. And if you've invested your own time, effort and energy 
to come onto YouTube and watch videos about fitness and training, the chances are you're not the kind of person who bitches out and sandbags everything. Woohoo! But at the same time, finding different ways to hack and increase our own intensity and application of effort towards the training program that we're executing is single-handedly the lowest hanging fruit for pretty much everyone. So by all means, play around with these different hacks, different nutritional protocols. I've messed around with like carb timing, intermittent fasting. These are all things that I mess around with on a day-to-day and week-to-week basis now. But I'm aware that both from a nutrition standpoint and from a training standpoint, mastering the foundations and the stuff that we all know works, executing that stuff better and being more consistent with it is the lowest hanging fruit and is gonna yield better results than that Cameroonian grapefruit I told you about in the intro. Number three, kind of linked to this, but kind of the other side of the coin. Absolutely, we should attack what we're doing intensely. And there are days that you're not going to want to do that. But I challenge you to do one thing. Think about the level of energy that you have on a day-to-day -day basis. And then when you go to train, does knowing what you've got coming up in the gym fill you with a bit more energy? Does it basically do nothing and it stays neutral? Or option C, does it actually drain you of energy? And if that's the case, then you probably need to change what you're doing. If you actually feel fairly pumped through life, but the current training regime you're executing is something that flipping drains the life out of you, then dump it immediately and find something else. Because my third uncomfortable truth is this, you can only muscle your way through a process that you don't like for so long. Embrace a process you love. A, because the training results you're gonna get from it are gonna be better because consciously or not, you will be able to execute it with more intensity. And B, your life will be a little less shit if you're spending 60 minutes a day doing something you actually enjoy. There's a difference between being perpetually demotivated because you hate the training program that you're doing and just having a bad week in regards to the gym generally. But luckily, again, you guys are very cerebral people and I trust that you'll be able to make the distinction on your own. If you're watching my videos and you subscribe to my channel, I know this because you are not dumb. Which is why I like having you here and we have one of the best growing communities on YouTube. So thank you. Number four, Q starting to piss people off. Your performance, your physique, and your health are dictated by your actions and your decisions and your behaviors, not by your genetics. Do genetics play a role? Yes, they do. That is undeniable. But I am a huge champion of personal responsibility generally. And considering you cannot change your genes, the amount of time, effort, energy, and money worth investing into this is basically allocated primarily from a nutritional standpoint, in my opinion. Understanding part of your genetic profile can help you understand what percentage of your daily intake of food should be carbohydrates, as an example. So that's kind of interesting and can help you optimize based on your own biological individuality. But from a purely exercise standpoint, I do believe that there are some people who glean a little bit of knowledge about the fact that they might have a fat gene or a higher predisposition to storing fat. And this will, consciously or not, change the way that they approach exercise and cause them to exercise less, to eat more, and then to blame it on their genetics. Genes and other innate biological factors are absolutely relevant. But considering at a root level, we have very little power to change these, it's interesting to know, but I personally believe it's extremely helpful to anchor into the reminder that our actions, behaviors, and habits are gonna have a bigger effect than any of that shit. And my fifth and final uncomfortable truth, which is something that blows my mind people don't have a greater, deeper level of comprehension of, is that motivation is instantly dwindling. That is to say, if something gives you motivation, which for me, watching a sports movie never fails to make me want to flip and work out. I've never played American football in my life, but every single time I watch Remember the Titans, I just want to go lift and sprint. But for you, if it's watching a CrossFit montage on YouTube, or listening to your favorite workout song or whatever the hell it may be. I think it's so useful to have these injections of motivation. Some injections last around an hour, which again, like the music or the montage might be. And then some slightly more abstract conceptual things last a little bit longer. But all of them peak right at the beginning. So you have that influx, you have that injection. And 10 seconds after your motivation is at the high point, And then you have to be prepared for it to drop. Motivation drops by the minute. And for some people, that's gonna be an uncomfortable truth, but hopefully for a lot of people, actually it kind of lets you off the hook and stop feeling shame for not being as pumped to work out as you were six months ago when you went to that awesome gym on the beach. 
This one could be an uncomfortable truth because a lot of people do feel that level of shame around it. But hopefully me sharing this with you now from a logical standpoint, at least allows you to let yourself off the hook a little bit. And there are my five uncomfortable truths on this beautiful day, guys. I hope you did enjoy that. If you did, please do smash that like button. Again, it only takes you two seconds, but it's amazingly helpful for punting my videos and my channel into the deep dark waters of the YouTube algorithm and hopefully allows me to continue my life into my mid thirties as an aspiring YouTuber. And if I continue to be successful and grow, it will prevent me from having to get a real job. So that is the biggest favor that you could do me. Please just press that like button. In fact, I'll even give you two seconds to do it now. We, we, we good? Did, did, you, did you do it? You did it, right? You did it, right? If you did enjoy this, guys, please do let me know in the comment section down below. Any questions on anything, put that down in the comment section below as well, as should be any requests or suggestions of anything that you would like to see in the future. As always, beautiful people, stay strong, stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will see you guys in the next video.